you know, it used to be if I showed up at my bank wearing one of these, everybody feared for their lives. But today, if I show up at my bank without one of these, everybody fears for their lives. What a difference two months can make. Welcome to the weekend services for Life Spring Community Church in Moore Park, California for May 3rd, 2020. If you're joining us for the first time today, I'm Pastor Tony. So let's go ahead and pray this morning. Father, thank you. Thank you for this time that we have to connect together uh, across distances and, and across uh, different homes and across the whole country even. We've got people all over the country who are tuning in. Lord, I just pray that you would bring us all together and make us one in Christ. I pray that this morning that you would meet with us and you would shepherd our hearts and shepherd our souls for you are our good and great shepherd. We pray to you now in Jesus' name, amen. Well, we've been hunkered down now for about six weeks and I don't know about you, but for me, the novelty of this thing is starting to wear pretty thin. I mean, at first it was new, concerning, of course, but kind of exciting at the same time. I mean, we're learning new technologies to, to try and stay connected with one another, learning how to do video sermons and, and video conferencing, and everything was new and, and kind of exciting. I mean, I like, I like learning new things. But six weeks later, I am ready to get back to normal. And even as you know, I listened to Governor Newsom, and it looks like we're looking at probably another four weeks of this. And who knows what normal is going to look like going forward? I mean, it's kind of funny when you think about it. You know, people wearing masks uh, would have made you nervous uh, a couple months ago. And now it's the people who aren't wearing our masks that are making us nervous. What a difference two months can make. Remember the recession of 2008? People thought it was never going to end. People were concerned. They, they thought we would never be the same afterwards. People thought it was the end of the world as we knew it. And then it ended. And we have been experiencing the longest running bull market our country has ever seen. We, we were breaking stock market records every week. Remember when unemployment dipped below 4% and employers couldn't even find good employees? That was only two months ago. That was only two months ago. What a difference two months can make. The single biggest adjustment that we can make to minimize stress in our lives is to view life as a long game. We're in a series called All Stressed Up, No Place to Blow. And the single biggest adjustment we can make is look at the long game instead of what's right in front of us. What a difference two months can make. Imagine, imagine the difference the next two months can make. Don't forget, you are a child of God. You're a child of God, and because of that, even in the midst of the most stressful of situations, you and I have an anchor for our soul. That anchor is described for us in the book of Psalms, in the 23rd chapter. I'm sure you've all heard it. It begins like this. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Let's pray and see what the shepherd of our souls wants to teach us today in the midst of this stressful situation. Let's pray together. Father, we come to you as our shepherd, and we as the sheep of your pastures. Lord, we ask you to show us how much you love us, how much you are there for us, even when the world is falling apart around us, even when disease is rampant, even when financial stress is caving in around us, you are 
our shepherd. And you lead us in green pastures to still waters and you restore our souls. Lord, teach us today who we are in your eyes. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Open your Bibles or Bible apps this morning to Psalm 23. There's a note-taking outline on our website at lscc.us. You can get on there on the homepage. Uh, It'll help you follow along with today's service. There's also an action page to help you apply this lesson to your life during the week. What does it mean to me personally that the Lord is my shepherd, that I shall not want? For starters, it means it's not about you. It's not about me, and it's not about you. Stress is the inevitable result of forgetting that important truth. We're in the hands of a God who never sleeps, never goes away, never turns his back, is always there for us and always on the job. The Lord is our shepherd. And when we forget that and we think that it's all about us, the stress starts building and building and building again. The word Lord, if you look in your Bibles, is in small caps. It's Bible code for the personal name of the God of the Bible. In Genesis, God is referred to as El or Elohim, which is the Hebrew word for God. But in Exodus, everything begins to change. When Moses stands before the burning bush, he asks God, what is your name? What will I tell the Hebrews as to who is sending me? And God answers Moses and says, I am that I am. I am is the name of God. And in Hebrew, it's Yahweh. It's his personal name. Yahweh is my shepherd. He's not just a God. He is a personal God to me. He's a God who has a name and who knows your name. It's only taken a single virus to shut down our entire world. The coronavirus is a small, tiny bit of protein that is actually 120 nanometers in size. A nanometer is 10 to the minus ninth meters. 10 to the minus ninth is 0.9 zeros and a one. It's an extremely small, tiny little thing, and yet... It's brought our planet to its knees. Our God, on the other hand, is greater, bigger than the whole universe. The the heavens cannot even contain him, the scripture says. And that God, that God is your shepherd. Yeah, I I don't think you need to worry because he promises that we shall not want. The word translated want means to be lacking or to be empty. And sometimes things happen in our world, that in our life that threaten to empty us of the things that we need. Sometimes things happen in our life that create a lack in our finances or a lack in in our health, or a lack in our needs. But God promises we won't want. Stress happens when we believe the circumstances around us instead of believing our God. Every once in a while, it's good to be confronted by the delusion of our independence and our self-sufficiency. The truth is there is no such thing as human independence or human self-sufficiency. You are a child of God. 
You're a child of God, not a child of this world. Your dependency is on God, who is your shepherd. The reality is that God's sovereign power and glory shine so much brighter when we are weak and when life seems to be out of human control. You can't get to be 60 years old without having at least one challenging doctor's visits. And I know some of you have had way more than one. Mine happened about three years ago. I'd had a preliminary diagnosis from my uh, GP and he'd sent me to see a specialist. And the specialist had looked at the MRI and the lab work and, and spent about 15 minutes comforting me and, and pretty much telling me that these things are normal, that, that, that there was nothing to worry about. Everything was going to be fine. And then he got to the part where he was going to check it out personally, and he responded with three words you never want to hear your doctor say. Oh, my God! I said, what? What are you you talking about? I thought everything was going to be fine. I thought you were telling me everything was going to be great. What's going on? Well, after I got over the initial shock of his response, everything was fine because the Lord is my shepherd. My doctor is a good guy, but he's not my shepherd. My doctor knows a lot of stuff, but he's not my shepherd. My doctor does the very best that he can, but he is not my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. The images in that section of scripture are profound. Green pastures and still waters. They paint a picture of the perfect rest. I remember, uh, I remember a picture that I had when I was younger. It was of a, a, a wood and a lake, and everything just looked so serene. And I always imagined in my mind that behind some of those trees, there was a cabin that I would be staying at and going out on the, the lake to, to just sit and fish. Not that I needed any fish, just because so peaceful. It looked so calm and serene, and and I wanted my life to be like that. You are a child of God. You are a child of God. Shake the dust of this world from your sandals and and stop striving. Get off the pathway of, of sin and anxiety and onto the paths of righteousness which your shepherd wants to lead you. Lie down in the presence of the shepherd of your soul. Open your Bible. Turn on some worship music and experience restoration. Restoration for your life, for your heart, for your mind, for your soul. You are a child of God. It's not about you. It's not about you and you are never, ever, ever alone. You're not alone. David writes, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff They comfort me. The valley of the shadow of death is as much a part of the shepherd's journey as green pastures and still waters. It's the same for us. Valleys in which we are chilled by the shadow of death are as much a part of the abundant life as times of refreshment. The danger in the valley of the shadow of death is fear. It's fear. We all face the valley at times. It's a part of life. It can cause us to tremble. And when it does, we feel anxiety. We feel stress. 
coming down upon us. Sylvia and I spent four months in that valley three years ago. And I can tell you that that valley changed my life for the good. It gave me a whole new perspective on my shepherd. It gave me a whole new perspective on life. I know that I know that I know that we never traverse that valley alone. We have a tendency to attribute to our Heavenly Father the character of his children that we ourselves exhibit and, and that the people around us exhibit, but, but that's a mistake. We fear that people around us may have a nasty virus, and in response, we distance uh, ourselves from them. But from God's point of view, I got to tell you, we have an even nastier virus, an even nastier disease. It's called sin. And yet our God does not distance himself from us. He takes our hand and he walks with us through life just the same. Even that final chapter of life. And just like we can pass a virus on to others, we can do the same thing with our sin disease. We can can pass it on to others. We, We think that what I do in my own life doesn't affect anyone else, but it's not true. It's not true. This world is a big old boat, and we're all living in the same boat, and sin is like drilling holes. And I can't tell you, hey, don't worry, man. I'm just drilling a hole in my end of the boat. Those holes make the boat leak. And eventually, the holes in my side of the boat will affect you as well. Sin causes leaks in the human race, not just in human beings. In the original language, the word death doesn't even appear in the text. It's not there. It's the valley of deep darkness. And that deep darkness comes over us when death is at the door, but also at other times as well. Whatever your deep darkness is today, Whatever deep darkness you may be facing, you are not alone. You're not alone. You are a child of God and he walks with you through even the darkest times. If you look closely at this text, you will see a pronoun change takes place right here in this verse. In verses one through three, David is talking about God as a he in the third person, but here he talks about God as you in the second person. It's a much more personal pronoun. Nothing brings God into sharper and clearer personal focus than strolling through the valley of deep darkness. For some people, COVID-19 is a valley of deep darkness because their company is shut down and they can't work. And although their paychecks have stopped, their bills have not. And others may be touched by the specter of death himself if one of their loved ones was among the 70,000 U.S citizens that have died in the last six weeks. But I want to remind all of us this morning that as bad as all that is, COVID-19 is not the enemy. It's not the real enemy. It's just a symptom. It's a, a symptom of our sin 
disease. The real enemy is the one behind sin. The real enemy is the devil. And the good news of Jesus Christ is that God prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God, preparing a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Imagine it. That are my enemies, the devil is spitting at me, condemning me, putting me down, pointing his finger at me, and God comes between me and him and sets out a table and begins to put out choice foods that I get to participate in, I get to eat, I get to enjoy in the presence of the one that is scorning me and mocking me and and saying all manner of things about me. I'm a failure. I'm going to die. It's all going to be for naught. All of the things he says to us, God comes in, the shepherd of our soul, and sets a table before me in the presence of my enemy. God is saying, whatever you do to my children, I will take care of them. I will prosper them. The word prepares is in the present tense. It means it's not something that's going to happen one day in the future. It means it's something that's happening right now. The word implies also forethought and planning. The table which God prepares before me in the presence of my enemies is something that he has planned in advance and he is doing intentionally. Anointing our heads with oil describes us being prosperous and us being blessed. You are a child of God. You're a child of the king and God takes good care of his children. Even when his children sometimes wish that maybe he took better care of us. I had those thoughts. I had those thoughts. I went through four months of treatment and waiting and wondering. Four months is nothing compared to what some people have to endure. I can assure you it was enough for me. But then I came to the place where I could say with the Apostle Paul, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And because of what he has in my life, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. For me to live here in this world is Christ. To die, that too is gain. That too is gain. And then I came to that place. And at that point, God restored my soul. Sure, my doctor and I, we get to do a dance every six months or so, but I can say with confidence that God's goodness and mercy follow me every day of my life. And I know that one day I too will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Many times it's that, it's the disconnect between the goodness that God actually gives us and the goodness that we as children wish for. We wish he would give us, but that's what brings stress in our lives. That's what creates that stress, but it doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be. The shepherd knows what we need better than we know ourselves. And If you truly are a child of God, God's goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life here on earth and will continue to follow you forever as you dwell in his kingdom for eternity. Right now, we don't have a cure for COVID-19, but there is a cure for our sin disease. It In this beautiful psalm, David makes some great 
great affirmations about the intelligent and, and thoughtful care that God has for us. But you and I know more about this shepherd than David ever did, ever could. We may not know more about shepherding than David, but we know more about the shepherd. Do you realize that? We know something that David couldn't have known. We know that 2,000 years ago, the shepherd himself became a sheep. The son of God became a son of man. So we know, as David did not, that our Lord knows what it means to be us, knows what it means for us to be in these tents of flesh. And we also know, as David did not, that our shepherd has himself tasted the bitterness of death. For not only did the shepherd become a sheep, but as a sheep, he laid down his life for all of the other sheep to die in our place, to take our punishment and our penalty upon himself so that we could live. The same Jesus. We also know that David did not. That three days after he laid down his life for the sheep, God restored his soul, raising him in glory with the promise that he also will be able to raise to life all of those who belong to him. This same Jesus is the one who leads us in paths of righteousness for his name. Sake. He offers to give us his righteousness and he takes our sinfulness upon himself, dying to pay the penalty for all of our wrong deeds. What David believed in hope, you and I know in fact. For in Jesus, we discover that although it's not about us, we are never alone. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. We're going to celebrate the sacrament of communion together as a church family right now. If you've surrendered the leadership of your life to Jesus Christ, then, then, or if, or if you're listening to this broadcast and you want to surrender your life to this shepherd, Jesus, then he invites you to express your faith in what he has done for you by taking part in this sacrament of communion. Even if what we have just talked about has brought conviction to you and you want to make some changes in your life, make those changes. But this sacrament of communion commemorates the forgiveness that is ours, even as it commemorates our commitment to walk in newness of life, to walk in the paths of righteousness that God has laid before us. So go ahead and and take the bread or the cracker. And um, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took a piece of matzah that looked like this and he broke it. He passed it around to his disciples and he said, take this, all of you, and eat it. This bread is my body that will be broken for you. If you're watching today and you believe in your heart that Jesus died on the cross to pay the penalty for your sins and save you, then this communion is for you. If you do not believe that, then I ask you to wait until you do believe it so that when you do take this communion, it will have significant spiritual meaning for you. Let's enter into a time of prayer right now and ask the shepherd of our soul to search our hearts and to bring to our mind anything that we need to confess at this moment, anything that we have done that is part of those sins for which he died. Let's go to prayer and just ask God to reveal those things to us. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. And as your Holy Spirit indwells me now, I pray that you would bring to my mind anything that you want me to confess, 
that you want me to repent of, to turn and change. And Lord, I acknowledge my sin before you today. And Lord, I do want with all of my heart to walk in those paths of righteousness in which you lead me. I thank you for accepting me and giving me this communion in your name. Amen. Behold, the bread of redemption, the broken body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Take, eat, and remember. Thank you, Jesus, that my sins no longer separate me from your Father in heaven, from my Father in heaven, but that I am clean because of your sacrifice for me. Amen. After the meal, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he passed it around and he said, this is the cup of the new covenant which will be poured out in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. A covenant is an agreement, and the agreement that God makes with us and that we make with him is simple. Jesus gives his life for us on the cross. We, in turn, give our lives to him here in this world. Jesus died for us. We live for him. If you agree with the terms of the contract or the covenant, then this cup is for you. But again, if, if you don't, if this is just something that motions that you're going through, I would encourage you to just wait. Wait until you put your faith in Jesus Christ and then this cup will have significant and profound meaning for you. Let's pray and consecrate our lives anew to Jesus's kingdom here on earth. Lord Jesus, thank you for including me in your kingdom here on earth. Thank you for making me a part. And I pray, Lord, that as you died for me, that I would find the, the, the courage and the motivation to live my life for you and for your glory here on earth. By the power of your Holy Spirit, give me the strength to live this out day by day, for I ask it in your name. Amen. Behold, the cup of redemption the blood of Christ, the Lamb of God, that takes away the sin of the world. May he have mercy on us. Take, drink, and remember. Thank you, Jesus, for this sweet communion, for this time with you to remember who you are, what you have done for us, and what you are continuing to do in us. May we live our lives for your glory and for your kingdom. Amen. Well, thank you for being a part of this service with me today. The world is a stressful place, even in the best of times, but don't forget, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides the still waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. If you would like to talk to someone about your relationship with Jesus Christ today, Text the word Jesus to 805-285-2636. That's 805-285-2636.
36. If you've renewed your relationship with Jesus Christ today, text the word renew to 805-285-2636. We'd like to help you on your journey. If you've got a prayer request you'd like someone to join you in praying about, you can text the word pray followed by your prayer request to 805-285-2636. God bless you all. Have a great day and I'll see you next Sunday. Bye now.